ಕಾಲ ಕಾಲ ಕೃತಿವಾಸ ಸುಭಗ ಪ್ರಣವಾತ್ಮಕ ಪುನಧ್ರ ಪುರುಷೋ ಜುಷ್ಯೋ ದುರ್ವಾಸ ಪುರುಷಾಸನ ನಮಸ್ತೆ so this is another amazing verse let's get right into it kala kala means the slayer of death kala also means time as well as death so shiva is the death of death so how is that and we still have to die even we could be the greatest devotees of shiv <laughs> we have to go through the death of the external body the food body the meat body half huh? but if we become a great devotee of shiva he will save us from having to go through the annihilation of death because our identity will no longer be rooted in the physical body instead it will be anchored in our devotion to shiva in whatever form and devotion is a deep deep subject we've gone into it before in other series here and basically devotion is of five flavors neutrality servitude friendship parenthood and conjugal love so conjugal love or erotic love is the highest but it's something we never hear about it's a very confidential subject it's deep and we're going to be getting into it slowly slowly in this new series on dream time which we just begun and if you follow that you will find amazing information about the spiritual world i'm going to reveal everything from my own realization and experience so if we become a devotee we no longer identify with the physical body and when it drops off then there's the other four bodies the energy body mental body intelligence body and consciousness so really we should identify with consciousness alone consciousness alone is unconditioned turiya huh it has no object except other states of consciousness and that's where we want to be situated that's what we want to think of as i myself huh my being everything else is extra it comes and goes it's conditioned so it's temporary that is not the self it can't be because we exist eternally like god aham brahmasmi next is kritivasas he wears a hide we always see shiva dressed in an animal hide usually of a leopard or tiger and these hides have a, a very strong property of repelling negative energy that's why yogis you'll often see yogis seated on a tiger hide in fact somebody gave a tiger hide to ramana maharshi and of course ramana maharshi he's not at all into like hunting and killing animals and stuff like that but he accepted this gift because when it's used for a purpose of yoga it insulates the body from the energy of the earth and when you're meditating that's what you want you want something to insulate you you don't want to be in contact with the earth you want to be above the earth osho rajneesh one time said uh it's great to meditate on a plane because you're at 40000 feet way above the earth and so the connection with the earth is broken and you can go very high subhag comely handsome uh very pleasant and easy on the eyes <laughs> and not just bhaga not just nice or auspicious but subhaga the most auspicious god is the most everything and even if we have an idea of some other form of god like vishnu 
These same names apply to him as well, or to her as the goddess. So we should understand that God is always the most of everything, the highest, the best, the greatest, the superlative in every field. That's the absolute. Pranava Atmaka. Pranava means Aum. Prana. Prana means life. And Pranava means that word or that expression, which is life. And that's Aum. Pranava. And Atmaka means soul. So Shiva is the soul of the syllable Aum the mantra, the greatest mantra. He is the deep meaning of that mantra. And in fact, we went over in the Mandukya Upanishad series how Aum expands into Namashivaya, five parts. So this is the mantra. And now we're talking about his name, so his thousand names are further expansions of the same principle because he is the soul of Aum. Unadra. Unadra means uplifted, high, blessed, huh? respected, given all authority, given all privilege, and the satisfaction of all desires. Simply to see him, simply to worship him, like I worshipped my Shivalinga this morning with flowers and Tulsi leaves. And so this is the most satisfying thing in life. We should do it. We should make room for it. We should give up whatever we have to to make time and space for this worship of Shiva because this is the best thing. This is the, the greatest thing and the most helpful thing for us in life. Purusha. Purusha really means person, the man. Uh, he is the original person. He is the person on whom all other persons are patterned and from whom all other persons are descended. So he is the original Adi Purusha, the first and the greatest of all persons. Jushya. Jushya means worthy to be served. You know, we often find ourselves in a situation like in a job or something like that, having to serve a boss or a corporation or a business or something that's really not worthy, <laughs> you know? Like working at fast food restaurants or something like this, where they're serving up just nasty animal-based food and stuff like this. But these are not worthy to be served. But Shiva is worthy to be served because his service in itself is elevating, purifying, and brings us the greatest benefits. So certainly he is worthy of being served. Durvasas. He appears or expands as the sage Durvasa Muni. And oh my God, there are so many stories about Durvasa Muni. Uh, he's more in the mood of Rudra. He's very easily angered. Another name of Shiva is Ashutosha, which means he's easily pleased or easily displeased. <laughs> and so the sage Durvasa had like 10,000 followers that would go with him everywhere. And then he, he would just like drop in, you know, with his, with his following. And you had to feed them. You had to please them. You had to serve them nicely. Or if not, he would curse you. And there are so many stories, especially in Mahabharata. You should read it. It's very interesting. Finally, Purda Shasana. This refers back to a story in the Puranas 
in the Shiva Purana, but we haven't got to it yet in the series, but we will. The demons had three cities, one in the lower planets, one on earth, and one in the heavenly planets. Or some versions of the story, they had one city in the sea, one on land, and one in space. But anyway, there were these three cities of the demons, and of course, they didn't pay any attention to the demigods. So the demigods didn't like this at all. They went to Shiva and said, please destroy these demons. But Shiva replied, but they're following all the Vedic principles. They're worshiping the Shiva Lingam. They're doing everything right. How can I destroy them? They're my devotees. So the demigods went away disappointed. But then they had a conference with Lord Vishnu. And they said, Vishnu, please expand your maya so that these demons make some kind of error and displease Shiva so they'll be destroyed. So he manifested a form, an incarnation of Vishnu. And this incarnation began to teach a false philosophy that basically there really is no God. You know, you don't see God walking down the street. You know, where is God anyway? We, there's no need to worship God. If you just meditate on the on emptiness, on the void, on nothingness, that's enough. You'll be you'll be saved. You'll achieve enlightenment and stuff like this. So I was astonished when I read this because the description of the philosophy being preached by this expansion of Vishnu is exactly Buddha's philosophy. It's exactly not the really not the real correct Buddha's philosophy, but the nihilistic version of Buddhist philosophy, where that says, ah, you don't have to worship anybody, you don't have to do anything spiritual. Just meditate on your own self or on the void, and you'll attain Nibbana, and you, you'll be fine, you know. So they started this. They, they took up this philosophy, and they dropped worshiping the Shiva Lingam in particular. And so after some time, Vishnu said, okay, now go to Shiva and petition him to destroy them. So in those, this was after, you know, a few thousand years of earth time. The demigods went again to Shiva and they said, look, these guys, these demons in these three cities have stopped worshiping you in your form as a Shiva Lingam. So is now isn't it time to, to destroy them? And this time Shiva looked at, and said, yes, I agree, I'll, I'll take care of it. So Shiva went on Nandi and he got everything lined up just perfectly and with one arrow, pshoo, he destroyed all three cities. That's how he got the name Tripura. Tripura means three cities. So Shiva destroyed the cities of the demons, and therefore he's known as Purashasana, chastiser of the demons of the three cities. So please continue to follow this series. This is the most auspicious, this is the most wonderful and beneficial meditation that is given in the Vedas, the thousand holy names of Shiva. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shaktihi Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya,